guys, I'm Prodigy Chief Mayor Soft Team Kilo 23. Now, after having a stressful day at work like I did today, I like to come home, unwind, maybe get a Jones soda if I can actually find some place that carries them, and just have some fun and install random parts that I have. So, from uh, Black Talon Concepts Airsoft, a little place that makes uh, MOSFETs, I got the Black Talon Concepts Spectre MOSFET. It's a drop-in fed. It replaces the trigger assembly of a version 2 or version 3 gearbox. I think they run about $100, and they have pretty much every setting you could ever imagine on a mass fed. So it's got active braking, um, pre-cocking, burst fire, lipo monitoring, uh, pretty much anything you could ever want in a MOS fed. Now this guy is supposed to be a drop-in unit, so we're going to see how uh, true it holds to that title. Um, basically, it comes in these really cool little uh, cardboard boxes. Uh, kind of looks like you're getting a necklace first off. But you got the MOSFET in here. Uh, it comes with a longer screw for one of the screw holes for your gearbox. It, the screw is pretty tightly threaded, so it might not fit in some gearboxes like uh, KWAs. Their threading is pretty wide on those. But I'm going to be putting this in uh, my g and GR25, so it shouldn't be a problem at all. It also comes from a Deans, with a Deans to uh, Mini Tamiya adapter, because the MOSFET fet wiring itself has a Deans adapter on it already. So if you're running Deans, you're good to go like I am. So I'm going to open up my GR25, drop this in, and uh, see how it works. So on my GR25, I have a KWA crane stock and buffer tube installed on it, just to give it more of a kind of a tactical feel and look instead of that original full stock it has. Now with a full stock, you get plenty of room to fit a really nice uh, 9.6 large battery, a MOSFET, and pretty much anything you want. But with a buffer tube, you're kind of, uh, and a crane stock of course, you're kind of confined to some battery and MOSFET limitations. If your MOSFET is kind of large, you might not be able to fit that 3-cell LiPo in there. Now, with this guy, it is pretty skinny, so it is doable. It is a little cramped, though. If you go with, like, um, another company MOSFET that sits outside of the gearbox and it wires into it externally, you can have some major space limitations with batteries and things like that. The cool thing about the Spectre FET is that all the computerized everything fits inside the trigger box, which, or the, uh, the switch assembly, which sits inside the gearbox. So the only thing that's going to be outside your gearbox is going to be wiring. That saves you a lot of space as far as battery installation. Alright, this is what the BTC MOSFET is going to look like installed, the Spectre unit. It is going to totally replace all the components in here, so the cutoff lever, the uh, trigger safety here, pretty much everything has to be removed. Um, all it's going to sit here is the trigger and the spring. Let's make sure the uh, the screw is sitting here that actually screws the entire unit into place so it uh, stays there. Notice there is a spring sitting on top here so the unit does stay in place pretty well when it's inside the gearbox. Now, you can just tap the trigger barely. There isn't much of a pull on it. It kind of makes it like almost a hair trigger in there, so it's pretty nice. Uh, there really isn't any room uh, between the trigger and the little actuation button. Now because there is some extra wiring with the BTC FET, I did have to shave down these little pegs here so the wiring would have enough room in the trenches there for it to fit. Now there are a few things you gotta check before you actually uh, reinstall and reassemble your gun. Uh, make sure that the semi-auto dial on the sector gear is actually hitting the little notch that uh, that is on the MOSFET unit. When you twirl this around you can actually feel just a small amount of pressure and it goes past that mark about right there. And that way you know you're hitting it. Now there are a couple things to keep in mind. Because I am installing this on my g and GR25, it originally did not have a metal contact plate here. So I actually swapped over my uh, KWA plate in here. It fits a lot more snugly. You really want your selector to be pretty snug in here. You don't want it to be rocking around at all. Uh, you can have problems with the uh, these little switches here if your selector's loose. So make sure that's pretty tight in there. Secondly, the gun does include an elongated screw that's supposed to sit in front of the selector plate. Now, most of these guns, um, the screws will go in on the opposite side. So with this one, uh, it really doesn't complete its purpose. It's supposed to stick out just a little bit here on this side so that the selector plate will not go uh, past a certain point. Now, when you're reassembling your gun, you're going to notice that the black wire is going to be in the front of the gearbox and the red one's going to be in the back. Usually it's reversed on a standard setup, but the BTC FET and other similar FETs are going to be reversed. So just make sure you reverse your motor along with that. You still want red to red, black to black. If you do opposite, that's just bad. That's common sense. Now when you get your Spectre MOSFET, you're going to get a four-page instruction manual. 
second page is going to have all your uh, settings on here. So just read that through thoroughly. It's really not that hard to use. This took me a few minutes to figure all this out. Now, it did take me a few hours of troubleshooting to actually uh, figure out a problem I had with this. Basically, what was going on is um, the scan is supposed to be semi-automatic only. It should be shooting semi-automatic when it's in the semi-mode. It can't even go to uh, full auto on the scan. I'd pull the trigger and I'd get either a four or a five round burst for the longest time. And I just couldn't figure it out. And it wasn't dawning on me that uh, when I would let off the trigger, it would shoot for an extra half second. So what was going on is the, uh, the cutoff switch wasn't making contact with the sector gear. So I had to uh, shim the sector gear down quite a bit just to make sure it uh, contacted it. And lo and behold, that was the uh, problem essentially. So I had to make sure the uh, sector gear was actually shimmed low enough. I guess that's a really surprisingly big issue for such a small little uh, aspect of it. All right, let's go ahead and give this a uh, quick try here before I go ahead and reassemble it. I've got my 11 one 1300 mod LiPo hooked up. Uh, as far as all the settings, I have, uh, let's see, I got LiPo monitoring on the uh, three cell LiPo, so it's only gonna run a three cell LiPo. I tried a seven four LiPo on this and it immediately detects that the battery is low. So it thinks that it should uh, have an 11 one hooked up to it. It's kind of cool. I've got the uh, digital fuse set on 40 amps. I like to keep it a little higher just in case. Uh, I've got motor braking on maximum right now. I tried medium earlier, but it was over spinning just a little bit, so I uh, turned it on to max and it seems to work just fine. Have it shooting semi only right now because it is a semi only sniper. Um, I'm probably going to leave it on semi. I might put it on two or three round bursts later just for fun, but right now we're doing semi only. Uh, rate of fire control, pre cocking, or turn off. I don't like to use pre cocking, I think it puts a little too much wear on stuff. So, uh, give this a try. Safe. Doesn't do anything just like it's supposed to. And semi. That's pretty good. As fast as you can tap the trigger, it'll shoot. This says fire completion, so it will complete each uh, cycle of the trigger. So every time you pull the trigger, it's going to shoot no matter what. All right, we're going to test this with uh, some point threes today and to see how fast my uh, trigger can keep up. Run an 11 one LiPo on it. What do you guys think so far? I think this thing, I believe it runs about $100. I'll put a link in the description so you guys can uh, go check it out yourself at the uh, site you can purchase it from. I think it's a pretty good investment. I mean, it uh, gives you burst fire, semi-automatic, active braking, all these different features that really end up saving your gearbox and it puts a lot less stress on parts. Uh, it ends up being just a really cool uh, little thing to put in your gun. It's a lot of fun to program it. It can be fun to install it. It is kind of a pain though when you run into issues like I did. Um, but I, hey, I got those issues worked out. Uh, I got it working properly just the way I want it and uh, haven't had problems. So I can't really complain at all. Uh, thanks guys from BTC for uh, letting me use this and check it out everything. Really appreciate it. Uh, again, this fits in a G&G GR25 just fine. Uh, I'm going to be using this on the field quite a bit. Um, if you, I'll uh, actually post a link in the description to some gameplay footage I had with this before the uh, I installed the MOSFET in here, so you guys can get a, kind of see how uh, awesome the gun is. Um, that really wraps it up. If you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop me a personal message or comment on the video or something. Uh, I will be doing a review of the Chimera FET by BTC pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to be try, uh, throwing it in uh, Buddy's gun. Sold it to him and he had some trigger problems with it, so uh, I told him, hey, I'll drop this MOSFET in there for you. So I'm going to show you guys how to, how to install that and get it working and everything, and uh, yeah, we'll check that out next time. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Prodigy from Airsoft Team Kilo23. Again, thanks to the guys at uh, Black Talon uh, Concepts Airsoft. Really appreciate you guys uh, sending this out to me. Take it easy, guys.